The new growth factor is a dollar increase in the annual levy limit that reflects additions to the community's tax base since last year. Proposition 2 and a half recognizes that new development results in additional municipal costs. For example, a new subdivision increases school enrollment and new businesses increase public safety and infrastructure requirements. The law sets out this formula for calculating the annual new growth factor. The extra assessed value added to the tax base due to the new development is multiplied by the previous year's tax rate. This formula arrives at a dollar amount to be added to the levy limit as new growth. Basically, what this formula measures is how much tax revenue the new development would have generated if it had been taxed last year. The added value that is included in this calculation comes from three basic categories of development. The first and usually largest category is made up of properties that have increased in assessed valuation since last year because of development and other construction activity on the site. Most of a community's new growth comes from this category. For example, last year, Parcel A was assessed as a vacant house lot for $50,000. This year, Parcel A has a new house on it and is now assessed for $250,000, an increase of $200,000. That $200,000 in added value due to the construction activity is included in the calculation of the community's new growth factor. The new structure doesn't have to be completed. For example, Parcel B is a single family home that was assessed for $200,000 last year. An addition was built to the house and this year, Parcel B will be assessed for $225,000, an increase of $25,000. That $25,000 in added value due to the construction activity is also included in the calculation of the community's new growth factor. The second category of tax-based growth is made up of exempt property returned to the tax rolls and new taxable personal property. For example, last year Parcel C was owned by a private college and was exempt from taxation. The college sold the parcel to a developer and it is returning to the tax rolls this year with an assessed valuation of $100,000. That $100,000 in added value to the community's tax base is included in the calculation of the new growth factor. The third and final category of tax base growth is the net increase in the community's assessed valuation that results when property is subdivided or converted to condominiums and taxed as separate parcels. For example, Parcel D is a 20-acre site of vacant land that was assessed as a single parcel for $1 million last year. Since then, a subdivision plan has been approved for the site. The plan creates 10 two-acre house lots that will be assessed as 10 separate parcels this year. Under the assessor's land valuation schedule, the total valuation of the 10 lots ends up being $1,100,000, a $100,000 net increase in the assessed valuation of the community. That $100,000 in added value due to the subdivision and taxation of the land as separate parcels is included in the calculation of the community's new growth factor. The new growth factor does not include the increased assessed valuation of a community's tax base that comes from the higher market value of property. The valuation increase has to result from a change in the physical condition, taxable status, or taxable unit of a property. For example, a single family house was valued at $300,000 last year and is valued at $350,000 this year. No construction activity took place on the site. The house is simply worth more in the current marketplace. The additional $50,000 in value is not included in the new growth calculation, even though it increases the total valuation of the community's tax base. In addition, the factor is not adjusted for decreases in the tax base due to demolition, fire, or other reasons.
it is based on increases only. Since the new growth factor is based on a comparison of last year and this year's assessed valuations, it is calculated after the assessors have set all values for the year just before the annual tax rate is set. At that time, it is reported to the Department of Revenue as part of the tax rate setting process.